itself, uh, they got reparations. They didn't attack and, and declare war against the United States. And they are they exercise real politique like others, even if they're imbalanced. You know, even Adolf Hitler didn't use chemical weapons in World War II. They have you know a desire of self preservation. Uh, I'm certainly in favor of threatening them with total incineration sure. if they ever used a weapon. What about uh, the Saudi Arabia wild card? We know Saudi Arabia is in there pushing for war with Iran more than Israel. Yeah, and again, I, for number one, I think the wild card is a little less pronounced because the price of oil is plunged and we, we don't need so much Saudi oil. But uh, it is another example where we're being played by other countries to do their bidding. You know, the United States comes first. I know, our citizens' interests come first. We pay the taxes, we obey the laws, we fight for the country. Uh, and we cannot permit, you know, Saudi Arabia to manipulate things. I mean, one of the things I'd like Saudi Arabia to do is urge uh, the president and the Congress to release these 28 classified documents that suggest they may have been up to their elbows in 9-11 itself. And sure. here we have, more than 10 years after the 9-11 commission report, we don't even know what the, that, that connection is because of the secrecy. Uh, but that, Saudi Arabia, other countries there, are all wanting us to get involved in their affairs. We say, you know, our country comes first. What do you think is really at the bottom of this? Because we know the U.S. and Israel were, were allied trying to overthrow Syria using really nasty people out of Saudi Arabia and other areas to do it. We now call them ISIS. They were called al-Qaeda. Now we know we've sided with Iran to try to get control of that out-of-control group. I, I mean, I don't even know if there is cloak and dagger here. It just looks like a bunch of political wonks that have really screwed things up. Well, you're right, Alex. We oftentimes try to impute some kind of grand strategy or plan, but there isn't any. I mean, I've worked in government as well. It's all ad hoc based upon the next 24-hour news cycle. And it is, it's just it's just reacting, you know, for the next next day. But that And that is the problem. There isn't any ultimate strategy. There's no goal. Can you imagine a war? Take World War II. It, it was defined as the goal is to, was to degrade to degrade, you know, the, the Luftwaffe. I mean, to fight the, the Japanese zero aircraft. That's not a strategy. That's just, we go fight to kill. But it has no political objective. There has no definition of, of what victory is. Uh, and that is one of the reasons why we should be out of this. We are in a position where if we didn't, you know, basically take a bayonet and smash a hornet's nest and create a lot of uh, very angry hornets, uh, we have the ability uh, to sit and ensure we are not attacked in the United States. And these other people who are half crazy and, and fanatical, they'll kill themselves. The Sunnis and Shia have been shooting at each other for a thousand years. Why should we get involved? And they're dispute. We don't wish misery on anybody else, but we got to be smart enough to know all we can sure. do is create anger towards ourselves and make ourselves less safe. And that is just stupid. Bruce Fine, the former head lawyer at the FCC who got rid of the Fairness Doctrine, we owe talk radio and so much of freedom of speech on the Internet to your initiative. And I know you don't like credit for it, but you you are the guy that did that uh, uh, and a lot more. But but the, he all, you also assisted Bob Barr in drafting articles of impeachment against William Jefferson Clinton. I mean, you are a guy that gets stuff done. You've served on the bar uh, of the American Bar Association Task Force on presidential signing statements. I mean, I'm not going to go over everything you've done. You represented Edward Snowden's father over the Orwellian surveillance of American citizens. I mean, you are a classical Americana do-gooder. Bruce Fine is our guest. We're going to break here in about a minute and a half. We're going to come back and get into free speech issues until 40 after when you leave us and, and look at this FCC power grab, in my view. But before we do that, putting a bookend on this, what do you expect out of Netanyahu's speech? What do you think it's really all about? Grandstanding to get reelected, or is he trying to sell uh, an Iran strike? Uh, he's trying, I think, to do both. Uh, I think he thinks the two converge, but we need to remember he's a politician. You know, it's, it's by definition he's trying to promote his reelection. But I do think that also he believes that his reelection chances are bolstered the more he can suggest he wants to. Uh, take out the, the nuclear equation in Iran, as was done years and years ago in the Osirik in, uh, in Iraq. I, however, believe that his ultimate presentation will be largely a one- or two-day affair, and it's piped here in the United States because it underscores the divergence between a Republican Congress and a Democratic White House. Uh, but I don't think the ramifications will endure more than 48 hours. 
I agree. I think they're using it as just another balkanization issue uh, to divide everybody, just like Soros has been caught funding the anti-police garbage. Also, after we talk about FCC issues that you're the prime man to talk about, I want to ask you about the Chicago Black site, because I know you're you're really uh, key on due process being key to everything. Bruce finds our guest. I'm Alex Jones. Hear that? That's the sound of a house being trashed while a gang of thieves ransack the place. And what they don't steal will be destroyed. This year, resolve not to be the next victim of a break-in. Go to faketv.com and discover a device that creates the illusion someone inside is watching TV, even when you're miles away. Security is a mindset, and fake TV should be part of your security solution. Be vigilant, but not fearful. FakeTV.com. Last year in the Nevada desert, one family took a stand for freedom. New Mana Food Storage was the first and only company to support the rights of the Bundys. While others stood down, New Mana took donations and provided storable foods to the men at Bunkerville. Founded by patriots who believe in liberty, New Mana Food Storage is GMO free, great tasting, and easy to prepare. Food is freedom. Buy New Mana today at PowerPrepper.com. New Mana Food Storage you'll love to eat at PowerPrepper.com. Hi folks, Alex Jones here with some important information. I want to tell you about Matt Redhawk and his team of patriots over at My Patriot Supply. Several years ago, Matt was sitting in his two-bedroom apartment, frustrated with the direction this country was headed, and the charlatans willing to sell us out for a quick buck. Deciding to take action, a company run by Patriots for Patriots was born. My Patriot Supply has never taken a loan or accepted outside funding. They now operate two distribution facilities and employ over 50 hardworking American men and women. It is rare to find companies who practice what they preach. And that's why I stock my pantry with high-quality storable foods from My Patriot Supply. Go to MyPatriotSupply.com forward slash Alex today for special offers on emergency food storage or call their preparedness specialist at 866-229-0927. That's 866-229-0927. Do business with someone who shares your values. MyPatriotSupply.com slash Alex. What good is a Big Berkey water filter? We get that question a lot here at BigBerkeyWaterFilters.com. And in a word, the answer is protection. Protection from water main breaks, E. coli contamination, environmental chemical spills, pesticide runoff, chlorine taste and smell, and all forms of fluoride. Plus, Big Berkey water filters are the original gravity water filter system and most trusted on the market for a reason. Tested by multiple independent NSF EPA certified labs, they are the gold standard in water purification. At only 1.7 cents a gallon, a single set of filters can last for 5 to 10 years. That means big savings. Big Berkey, the one that's powerful enough to purify stagnant pond water. Get a Big Berkey today at BigBerkeyWaterFilters.com. GCN listeners receive 5% off all ceramic filter systems. Visit our website or call 1-877-99-BERKEY. That's 877-99-BERKEY. Big Berkey Water Filters, for the love of clean water. Gold, it's like nothing else on Earth. From the Romans through the Renaissance, from the Industrial Age to the Space Age, gold has weathered the test of time. For 6,000 years, gold has remained the ultimate store of wealth. According to the World Gold Council and the U.S. Mint, demand is at an all-time high. The stage is being set for the reemergence of gold as the common-sense alternative to a fiat paper currency that gets weaker every day. Midas Resources is proud to offer the hard-hitting report that arms you with the truth you need to protect you and your family from the Fed's plans for your hard-earned money. Don't gamble with your future. Call Midas Resources today and ask for your free copy of As Good As Gold. Call 1-800-686-2237 for the report the Fed hopes you'll never see. As Good As Gold can be yours by calling 800-686-2237. If you have ever thought about owning gold, you must read this report. Call Midas today at 800-686-2237. Alex Jones Show. I'm Alex Jones, your host. Bruce Fine was general counsel, the head lawyer for the Federal Communications Commission. He's the guy that gave birth to the rebirth of the First Amendment so we can have talk radio. 
and change the ideas, because I've researched this. I'm not just saying this about our guest, about how the FCC should operate to promote the First Amendment, not degrade it. But I'm being partisan here because it's a fact. Under Obama, we have seen an acceleration towards it to censor and control. We've heard senators say, use the FCC for a fairness doctrine. Take over cable. Take over movies. Take over print. When it's online, we need to protect the public from hate speech. But how better to fund it than for George Soros to give $196 million to bill it as net neutrality. Now, I haven't gotten Bruce's take on this current fiasco yet, but we'll find out. As best I can tell, sir, and you're the expert on this, this is a Trojan horse, and they won't release the 332 pages, and he won't testify to Congress. What is going on? Well, I think it's a usurpation, again, of the executive branch of the legislative authority of Congress. And think of this uh, rather bizarre element to this net neutrality ruling. Uh, on the one hand, the commission, the three Democrats, conclude that, you know, the antitrust laws, the anti-monopoly laws aren't sufficient you know, to protect the public interest in efficient operations of the Internet. Now, on the other hand, they say that there's so little need for it, they're going to forbear from regulating prices and 90 percent of what they could uh, regulate under Title II. That's called the common carrier regulation. So they're basically just picking and choosing and what parts of the statute they want to enforce. You know, that's up to the, it's, it's an earmark of, of what Congress should be deciding. There's another element about a net neutrality that is equally bizarre. And that is typically, Alex, when you uh, buy a service, you can have various qualities of the provision. For instance, you can apply first class or business class or economy class. You get taken from A to B, uh, but the actual quality of the service varies and you pay more if you receive higher quality. First class pays more than economy. And net neutrality is trying to say, well, you shouldn't permit people to buy first class tickets. I mean, really? That would seem bizarre to anybody who has taken a plane and for whatever reason needed the space, needed the rest or whatever to have a greater accommodation. And the whole purpose there behind this net neutrality is, no, some people, especially who are spectrum hogs, who use vastly more bandwidth, they shouldn't be uh, permitted to say, well, I pay more and I need to get my, uh, my content uh, to the end user a little bit faster, uh, and I use up more space, and so I'll pay more. I mean, it's a, the anti-market uh, theory. You know, sure, it sounds like something we hear out of Venezuela and their ideas of uh, economics. Yeah, exactly. That, that's a, it's trying to it's a, a variation of God's plan, uh, the Soviet method of uh, distributing goods and services, where you have the government deciding, you know, how much and who should be paying what for what quality of uh, of internet connection. But is I mean, aren't we missing the really big issue here? And correct me if I'm wrong. Well, isn't this a power grab with the FCC saying that it's now over telecommunications completely, and, the, and that it's going to be over? Uh, future development of that architecture? I mean, that's a huge expansion of the jurisdiction. Well, certainly it's a, a, what I view as a usurpation. And although they claim that for the moment they won't use it to regulate prices uh, uh, in, in, in detail, they're claiming that they could if they wish to. And I want to step back for just a moment, Alex, and, and remind the audience that the antitrust laws, you know, they call them the the Magna Carta of Economic Liberties, they apply in telecommunication to the Internet like they apply anyone else. So no one's talking about permitting price fixing or abuse of monopoly power. That's already illegal. And we have the Federal Trade Commission and the Justice Department to enforce them. So while we have the FCC coming back and saying, well, we know better than the Charter of Economic Liberties, you know, how the Internet should be run, especially ridiculous conclusion when it's the Internet that's, that's really the, the engine it's the 20 cylinders of our economy that's making things move. Why are you trying to mess up something that's working very, very well? And the answer is, it goes back to politics and say disgruntlement uh, uh, with uh, the way the market system works, as most progressives and, and liberals are. They don't believe in free sure. trade. Why would the chairman not show up to Congress? That seems very belligerent. Well, not only that, in my view, Congress has the right not only to the chairman's uh, testimony, but to anybody else's. You know, it's an attempt probably to avoid what could be very uh, embarrassing questions. Uh, Congress has the right to overrule by statute anything that uh, the FCC does. Uh, of course, the president could veto it. 
but that's their congressional prerogative. And, and to refuse to show up really is another example of how the executive branch has just become almost a one-branch tyranny. Let's come back uh, the with that. The executive branch has shrunk to, to almost uh, uh, a cipher. And, and I would be holding these people in contempt and finding them each day. Stay there, Bruce. Fine.